Hi, I'm Matt. And I'm Tom. And this is The Park Bench. We are significantly backlit today. Yes, it's, it's one of those things where it's really sunny, but if we put the tripod over there on the path, it, we'd be in the way of everyone. So I'm going to do my best to bring out, to bring out the colours here and to avoid sunburn on the back of my ears. And <laughs> he'll do his best to remove the audio of, of but maybe an opera singer over oh, there. Oh yeah, I heard the proper <laughs> happening over there. I'm a bit more cheap. <laughs> Sorry, the proper what? <laughs> she was wandering around practicing. Okay. It's a reasonably quiet park, so I can see why you <laughs> do it here rather than in your house. God, imagine the neighbours. Oh yeah. Oh. As you may have seen, uh, <laughs> speaking of things that will annoy the neighbours, uh, oh, yeah. over on my channel, uh, we set off some fireworks. All at the same time. And if you haven't watched it, watch it first, yeah, otherwise spoilers. <laughs> um, <laughs> I have wanted to do that for a long time. That idea has been in my head for years. And I suddenly realised that, uh, yeah, that's a possible thing. You can, you can <laughs> ask a fireworks company to deliberately mess up, and they will do that. <laughs> but I want to talk a bit beh about behind the scenes because it was interesting to film. It was a long day to film. And first and foremost, I was worried that it wasn't going to come across on camera. Yeah, because it's it's one of those things that you can really feel in person, and it's happening. And because the fireworks were actually really close to us, we were at a safe distance, but that was about 150 meters. Normally, for a display, you're a lot further away, so the fireworks happened up there. But for us, they were still pretty much above us, um, and. The all-encompassing wow is quite hard to come across on camera. I think our reaction shot actually sold it way, way better than the shots of the fireworks yeah. themselves. It looks like that gag from Malcolm in the Middle where they just set off the firework and cut to an identical shot of the three people in daytime <laughs> for about three seconds. <laughs> it's a brilliant gag. And if you look at the lighting, there's a lot going off. And it did feel like it all mm. lit the entire area because it did. And yeah. you could feel it. That's the thing that won't come across the feel of it. About 10 seconds after that, after we'd sort of calmed down, I just thought, oh, it, it's great. But on camera, that's going to look like one massive firework because it, uh, because it, what we should have done is gone rather than boom. And then I saw the edit. Now, the one thing I'll add now that, um, that felt the most impressive to me in person about it was that didn't come across as well um, in the in the sound of it was in person it felt like two big bangs they had some extra wishes in between yeah. there was a big bang as everything left the ground and then there was a second big bang when it all exploded up in the air so it was a bang that you feel and then another bang that you feel and then that was it it was done yeah there was also the <laughs> but the other two big bangs because you could feel them felt so yeah. much bigger um, that I didn't even notice the extra stuff while I was there. Yeah. So bang, bang, done. <laughs> so we should talk about how it, how it worked behind the scenes. Um, so first of all, uh, not a sponsored video, uh, but thank you very much to the team at Titanium Fireworks who, so they do the uh, London New Year celebrations on the London Eye. Uh, they do the Edinburgh Hogmanay celebrations. They do all sorts of massive fireworks today. So I emailed them because I emailed a few fireworks companies anticipating that they would turn me down because yeah. like, I don't have the budget for that. <laughs> um, but it turns out that they will happily do smaller displays throughout the rest of the year because most people don't want fireworks apart from so around bonfire night, around uh, Chinese New Year, around Diwali and around New Year's. That's it. Rest of the year. Corporate no. gigs. Corporate gigs. Corporate and they, gigs and weddings. They, they did say that uh, uh, when we were chatting to them, something along the lines of, yeah, people think we do nothing all year round. We, we're still doing stuff, the corporate stuff, yeah. <laughs> inside stuff. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> this is obviously in the category of don't try this at home. Yeah. Which is why we went to a, a big proper company for this. Yeah, and then to an airfield near Cambridgeshire, which they use as their testing ground. And they had permission to. They had to notify the police about this, because there is a fireworks warehouse, completely unconnected to this company, about half a mile away, and an explosion this large... <laughs> that probably set off seismographs nearby. <laughs> so so it was not to arouse any suspicions. Yeah. <laughs> so we got there about midday. Yeah. And the, the display didn't go off till about six, yeah. just after six. We were intending to film the park bench out there with them talking more about fireworks. 
But there wasn't time. It, it takes a while to set up that many charges. Is that yeah. what they call them? Um, so you'll have seen in the video the footage of them setting it up. They had to um, put together all of the racking and the tubes that everything went in. Yeah. Then they have to run all the wires to everything and then connect it into the um, the fireworks themselves, make sure they're safe, then yeah. check all the fuses and run the cable down to the far end of the airfield. Uh, in between all of that, we are um, filming them do it, stopping them from doing what they're trying to do by filming them. Yep. <laughs> and interviewing them. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's what I meant. Yeah, stop. Can yeah. you just stop that for a minute so we can interview you? Can we just, stop, can you just drop that in there again so we can get that at the right angle? And, <laughs> yeah. We didn't go full TV crew on, on yeah. the, the level of that. but what, what surprised me is that rain would not have stopped them. We got there and it absolutely tipped it down with rain for half an hour and then it just cleared up for the rest of the day. You can see that in the, the big time lapse. Um, but they would have just put a tent over which, you know, a portable little gazebo, gazebo over, the, um, over the fireworks they were loading at that time and then covered them with plastic and moved on. Because it turns out that once you've set them up and covered them with a sheet of plastic, they're pretty much waterproof. Yeah. And a thin sheet of plastic is not going to stop a fireworks shell. <laughs> it's just going to go through it. If it's going all the way up there, it's going through a thin sheet of plastic. Yes. <laughs> um, and they managed to save a little bit of time because they have extra measures they normally put in place to stop fireworks when they set off, setting off the one next to it. But, but for that day, it wasn't a concern. Yes. That was exactly true. what we were trying to achieve. Yeah. So we deliberately introduced a timing error. Um, other things that have caused this problem are literally the, a barge catching on fire. Not for them, uh, <laughs> but for other fireworks companies, that's been a problem. Also, it turns out you can accidentally push, push a button that tests every connection while you've accidentally got it in fire mode, <laughs> which will probably test every single one of those fireworks at Bang. full charge. Yes. <laughs> um, all of these things, again, I say, not this company, have happened. I've looked into the safety board things and we decided timing error was the, the best thing to simulate. It's just really bright. I thought this this had turned okay, off. Right. No, I just couldn't see the screen because okay. it's really bright. <laughs> it's fine. We tested it. <laughs> uh, you should talk about how you film me at night. So oh. the, the night shot of me walking with the, the fake button is uh, originally in 4K, shoved down to 10H to try and reduce the noise in it. But the... Matt, can you film me walking down an airfield at night and make it look good? <laughs> So I, I, I thought it wouldn't be as dark as it was when we were doing it, but mm -hmm. I brought a load of lights with me anyway, just in case. Because yeah. um, I didn't realise at, at the beginning of that, that when, when we were planning it, that we were going to be setting off the fireworks as we got to the end of that shot yes. and, and then set them off straight away. I this thought is it why might I need cut to, send, to it something else This later. is why I need to send you a script early. <laughs> <sighs> um, so it was actually night because you don't want to set up fireworks in the daytime because you can't see them. I mean, I mean you can. Yeah, you can, just... but it's not as impressive. No. Uh, um, so I needed a light. And luckily our friend Jonty had come along to watch the fireworks. Uh, oh, Jonty, while you're here, can you hold this light and point it at Tom's face, please? Which sounds easy. And then you think, in that shot, Tom is walking forwards, mm -hmm. which means I'm walking backwards. And I've got used to this now. I do this a lot, yeah. holding the camera, walking in my weird walk to keep it, try and stop it bouncing while I'm doing it. Yeah, uh, yeah Jonty, we're going to have to walk backwards. Can you just keep with me? Uh, which was fine. Yeah, that's, that, that was not a problem. But then we get to the yeah. end of the shot. Yeah, you're last. I, I, I wanted to run round and go towards the, <laughs> the gazebo where they were firing things yeah. from. And there was no way of explaining in words when or how I wanted to do that because the mic's on recording Tom. Yeah. So I said, John, T, do you mind me just grabbing you? He went, okay. And that's how we did it. I just went like that yeah. and, and then just walked with him <laughs> <laughs> as if he was a piece of we equipment should, itself. We should get John T on the bench sometime. We've got some stories Yes, for him. we've got a lot of things we yeah. could talk about with him. Um, <laughs> but it worked. And then I, like, I got the footage back and I'm like, oh God, this isn't going to look right. And then uh, Michelle, my editor, who uh, basically anything that involves big interviews or complicated stuff, she is wonderful at cutting them down and making it work. And the same way as, if you remember the, the drop tower in Bremen, the zero-g oh, yeah. thing, taking six shots and make it simultaneously impressive and clear what's going on and tracking an object from multiple angles. Yeah. It's basically the same techniques. Make it look as good as you can, but you can't lie about how long this is because 
It's yeah. one single effect. And the thing that sells it, the thing I use as the thumbnail, is actually a shot just after the burst where you can see our shadows, <laughs> our silhouettes cut out amidst this massive thing that's taking up a quarter of the sky. That's what sells it for me. It's, it's quite hard to film fireworks because yeah. you can't adjust your exposure because they're not up there yet. Um, yeah, and they sent up a couple of test fires. Yes, so you they had, frame the they shot. had uh, two single ones so we could see about the height where it was going to go. And then they had another one of about three or four which showed the spread so I could work out how wide it needed to be. And the answer was, I could not get a shot wide enough. Yes. I had a GoPro on full wide at the far end of the field. That was a good 100 metres away. At least. I, I ran it. Yeah. Because it would just take too long to get there otherwise, and I don't run. Uh, <laughs> um, Matt Gray, he doesn't sing and he doesn't run, <laughs> apart from when he really needs to for a joke. <laughs> Fact. <laughs> and I had that pointing up at the sky and it still didn't get everything in it. <laughs> I, I just remembered from that, that weird voice and everything I did. Uh, and a thing from when I was back at school many, many years ago. Okay. And this, I, I didn't hear this person. This, this was one of those legends that got passed around. Uh, I, and the setup, you will need, you will learn everything you need to know about the setup of why this happened from the punchline, which is very simply Deputy Head's voice. Debbie Head Teacher's voice bellowing at full volume in an accent I can't do, but which is vaguely northern. Bellowing around several classrooms from somewhere, just going, No! I don't like fireworks! I don't like fun! And I don't like you! <laughs> now, you can work out what happened to get a head teacher be bellowing at a child those exact words. <laughs> I think they said it was something like, Don't you like fun, sir? <laughs> I didn't hear it. All I knew is that for the rest of my, the career at that school, that man was known by that line. <laughs> Just never to his face. And now we know why Tom wanted to set up <laughs> so many fireworks. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Head Teacher. <laughs> <laughs> you really look f***ing ridiculous. I'm getting sunburned on the backs of my ears. I think your ears are just getting hot rather than actually getting sunburn, aren't you? <sighs> End up with sunburn. I'll give you some aloe vera. Aloe vera. <laughs>